Well, folks, we're back with another Festival of Legends card review, and we got some fun stuff in this one, like Kangor Dancing King. He is indeed the Disco Legendary. <laughs> I never thought we'd say that. He's a five mana three three with life steal and death rattle. Swap this with a minion from your hand and give it life steal. Uh, so pretty cool he way here to potentially cheat out some really big minions from your hand and then benefit even extra by giving that big minion life steal. For instance, we're gonna see a big minion in this video, the Anoyo Troop. This guy's a big old three six with a death rattle that gets you even more Anoyo Trons out of him. That'd be pretty cool to cheat out. And of course you can imagine lots of other big awesome cards that the Kangor could cheat out as well. So that's gonna create some real friction for the opponent. Do I deal with the Kangor? If I don't, what are they gonna do? Um, now, you know, that's a specific deck build requirement if you wanna get great results here out of your Kangor. But the good news is you can go again. The Kangor is gonna go right back in your hand. So you can play him again and just keep doing this turn after turn after turn if you have enough big threats. Your opponent doesn't seem to have a great way to deal with the Kangor. And since you're getting life steal all throughout that, it, it does feel like you're gonna have some survivability to support that game plan. Sometimes it's hard to just plop down a five cost card and not do much else. But since you might be able to recover off the back of taunts and lifesteal and even rush minions as well with lifesteal, it might give you a much bigger window to actually make something happen out of this play. I mean, this cheating uh, uh, an Anoyo troop out is just going to shut down some aggro decks. It kind of gives me uh, like old uh, uh, cube lock vibes where you're like getting the Void Lord down early in the game. And it's just like, oh, God, what do I do against this? Frankly, even kind of scarier than Void Lord because of all the like divine shields and stuff to push through. So um, that's really, really intriguing to me. Also, I want to see, can we get two Kangors going? Can we get a Kangor in hand and a Kangor on board? And then the Kangors just swap with each other? I don't see any reason based on the wording that wouldn't be possible. It doesn't say like another minion from your hand or anything that's doesn't say a non Kangor minion from your hand. So might be able to create a, a nice little loop there uh, outside of, you know, silence or sap effects or something where you're just getting Kangors into Kangors. That could be really fun. If not especially good, I think you're mostly gonna wanna cheat out these big awesome Anoyo troops or whatever other gigantic minions, maybe some with higher attack values as well. But ultimately, I, I really like the idea of this. And I think the lifesteal aspect on this gives it more viability than I would normally expect. I might often say this is too slow and too easily disrupted, but with Lifesteal, that gives you a lot more potential. So I'm definitely intrigued. I think this is the kind of deck I would absolutely love to play, which might be biasing uh, my perception a little bit, but I'm a little high on Kangor Dancing King. So next up here, let's talk about the Anoyo Troop. And yeah, this just looks nuts. This is, like I said, a super Void Lord and I think it's so high friction and so freaking annoying that it's gonna get played. This is the kind of card that is just so dramatic in its ability to completely shut down board-based strategies that you start looking for excuses and reasons to play it. Maybe that's like a Menagerie build and this is your crazy mech card. Maybe that's a big deck with a Kangor. I don't know exactly which direction that goes, but this card just does so much at completely shutting down and locking down a board that that's a great excuse to get played. I mean, Taunt Divine Shield on the front half, that's an annoying body. And then if you do manage to kill it, you got three more Anoyotrons to get through. That is an absolute nightmare. So uh, Anoyo Troop looks terrifying, but also I think looks pretty powerful. And then look at this, what do you know? The lead dancer, more support for this archetype. A six mana four two with a death rattle. Summon a minion from your deck with less attack than this minion. Oh boy, the Anoyo Troop has less attack than the lead dancers. So now we've got a way to summon stuff from hand with the Kangor Dancing King and stuff from deck as well. Here with the lead dancer, you could hit a Kangor into a lead dancer into an Anoyo Troop and your big paladin deck is just absolutely off to the races. So um, I'm into this. I actually think this looks really cool. I think this is, you know, actually in our last review, we talked about like Inza into that that uh, that that seven mana spell that summoned the, the board of, you know, six, five, four cost minions or whatever. And, um, you know, I, I said that had some consistency issues like that seemed unreliable to me because you didn't really know what you were getting. This is kind of the inverse of that because this is, you know, if you're getting an Anoyo Troop, that is an incredibly reliable board swing that you're cheating into play via these other cards. And this, you know, is going to help you stabilize, right? This is what you need to make sure that this investment you've made is, is successfully paid off with some stabilization. 
And that's why I think I have a little bit more faith in this than I do perhaps in the Shaman version, even though that kind of has a more immediate stat impact and this is a little bit more delayed. I think this has a reliability that gives it a, a, a real potential. So, so I didn't really talk about the lead dancer enough here, I guess I should circle back and talk about this. So this is a neat design, right? Cause it's gonna summon a minion from your deck with less attack. So you can actually kind of control what this card's gonna pull as well, which could be a good thing if you wanna make sure it's getting something like an Anoyo Troop guaranteed. Could also be a bad thing sometimes too, because if you wanna run some big things and potentially shoot out like an 8-8 or whatever, the lead dancer can't actually do that. So I do wonder if this limits the reliability and consistently consistency a little bit of this package. And you might just be better off going for like Kangor and an oil troop instead of going for uh, the lead dancer. So I think there's a risk this card doesn't quite look as compelling as the other parts of a big paladin package, but overall, I'm still pretty excited about this archetype. So next up here, we have Jive Insect. <laughs> It's a five mana legendary spell for Shaman. It's transform a minion into Ragnaros the Fire Lord with an overload of two. Uh, I do wonder if that means Rag might be coming back in the core set. Sometimes token minions that reference old school stuff like that indicates that they're showing up in the core set. Uh, so this is also potentially a little synergy piece for uh, Inza, of course. He's literally right there in the artwork as well. Uh, as an overload card, this could actually be a four mana play post Inza. Uh, you know, getting a Ragnaros for six slash seven mana is sort of efficient because Ragnaros is an eight mana card. But that said, I don't know that Ragnaros really holds up to today's standards, especially as an eight mana card. I don't know how exciting that's going to be. Now, that said, there is one interesting angle here uh, that I, I wanted to I wanted to talk about a little bit. We saw some of the like mana cheat on the overload cards through Inza and through that spell as well. I wonder, or that, that weapon, excuse me, the instrument as well. I wonder if there's some world where you can get like a bunch of Ragnaroses on board through like a criminal lineup or some other sort of mechanism to copy Ragnaroses and just use that as a lethal push. Just, you know, make four rags and, and deal 32 damage or whatever. That's something to keep in mind here. Criminal lineup, I finally found this card. Cause this is overload that gets discounted. This is overload that gets discounted. Like, you know, you, you've got a way to, to break the weapon and discount some spells. This is an interesting thought. I don't think it's gonna be good. It feels like that's too expensive, but maybe an angle for this card uh, that we're not otherwise thinking about. So uh, I don't know, keep an eye on the Ragnaros stuff, but ultimately uh, still again for the Shaman cards, feels a little slow, a little clunky. I'm not sure how this keeps up all that well. So next up here, we have Heartthrob, a new Priest minion, three mana, two, five, undead. And remember, Priest does have a pretty good undead deck floating around right now, some good synergies there. This has Overheal, summon a random minion with cost equal to the amount overhealed. Uh, and um, that's kind of actually really nice. This starts at full health, so any health applied is immediately going to overheal this. So if you have something like the location we saw down early that can heal three, uh, that will be something you could immediately proc on turn three when you drop the Heartthrob down, and then summon yourself a random three cost minion, which uh, this being a two five and then getting an extra three cost early, that's a pretty nice early board sort of play. And if you had any other overheal stuff that you'd played in between there or, or additionally after this, you could start to see a, a real board building off the back of this overheal. Uh, now, you know, this is not as exciting with something like your hero power necessarily. I don't think you're gonna wanna spend your turn five playing a heartthrob and a hero power for a two drop. That's not great. But if we get a critical mass of these overheal cards, we already saw the big legendary that feels like it could be a great sort of finisher. And then you've got this stuff to help you get some early tempo. You can see that coming together rather nicely. And I do feel like if they're introducing an entirely new uh, core set keyword with overheal like this, that's gonna be a permanent fixture of the class, we assume, then they're gonna wanna invest in it and gonna wanna make that pretty good. So I do trust uh, this package a little bit just on the basis of the faith in the new keyword. And I think this card makes a lot of sense with some of the stuff we've seen. Any cheap, small heal here. And and also, this is just kind of hard to kill as a five health minion on three. So this sticking around for multiple turns, your opponent, even if they can't kill it, is gonna feel like they have to kind of trade into it. Maybe they make some inefficient trades just to prevent you from overhealing it. So there's a little bit of awkwardness there. Sometimes this will create opportunity just because of the threat that it, it, it sort of uh, it persists on board with that potential overheal payoff later as well.
So next up is the Dream Boat. This is a two mana one two Naga. And when you know more overheal synergies, this has a battle cry. Restore three health to all other friendly minions and gain plus one plus one for each one overhealed. So uh, yeah, look, we got the Heartthrob. This is gonna heal it for three. So this could summon a three three when these are played together. And also of course, gain some additional stats for itself as well so if you can get two or three minions out with overheal and this thing hits that's gonna be a monster play proccing all of these overheal synergies potentially and then also developing its own nice stat line also some naga cross synergies here as well so that's an uh, a thing to keep an eye on for priests of course we know naga priest has a lot of potential so i'm liking this early board swarm overheal package i'm, I'm buying into this i think and then, hey, what do you know? Idol's Adoration is the instrument here for Priest, and it makes your hero power cost zero, which there you go, the Heartthrob. Now you got the location, you got a zero cost hero power. Suddenly you might be able to play this and instantly on turn three, follow up with multiple overheals, summoning, summoning you additional minions. And you can use this two turns in a row as well, of course. So, uh, pretty interesting little package coming together. I really like this, guys. I'm, I'm excited to play this. Again, I, I might be biased by my excitement to do something new and cool in Priest, but uh, it's, it's clear to me that it's getting a lot of support, and it seems to fit in pretty well across a couple other potential archetypes to kind of meld in with this one, whether that's Naga, buff synergies, you got some undead synergies here to cross over as well. So, between the two, is, is Priest going to be able to assemble some pretty nice tempo deck uh that's that's utilizing this package i think so all right so next up here for druid we have the timber tambourine this is a four mana two three instrument with a death rattle summon one five five ancient and then play cards that cost five or more while equipped to improve and uh man that seems kind of scary because that means you're summoning you know two three four ancients or something if you want i guess seven if you really want and all for only that four mana commitment here on the tambourine. And it's not a great weapon, but it's not a terrible weapon either. The two, three weapon still useful. And in particular, if you think about this from a curve standpoint, right? Like play this on a four mana turn, you play a five cost card the next turn. Or I guess you attack on the first turn, you attack on the second turn, you play one five mana card then. So you've already got two ancients. And then the next turn you play another five mana card and then you attack for the death rattle. So you're gonna get three ancients out of this while still committing other cards on the same turn. So that that uh, that turn, two turns later, basically, you're going to dump three five five Ancients and then whatever other like big thing that you played alongside it for this just really dramatic impact on board. Uh, who knows what all you could do all at once. Now, of course, that demands you have the right size stuff at the right time, but Druid plays well with a lot of mana anyway. They have big cards like that anyway. I don't think that's going to be that crazy. And if you miss a turn or two here or there, you know, uh, is that really the end of the world? Even two five five ancients isn't bad for only that four mana up front with a decent weapon attached to it as well. So th this looks really powerful to me. This looks like uh, a great thing for Druid and we're gonna see some cards here that support this really nicely as well. So keep your eye out for sure on the Timber Tambourine. Moving on to the Summer Flower Child. This is a five mana four five. Battle Cry draw two cards that cost six or more so this is just perfect by the way tambourine on four flower child on five she costs five so that's great and then that's getting you some follow-up curve cards as well uh and if you play this on curve for the finale or later at the end of your at the end of your mana of course those are going to cost one less as well so you're going to get uh those down to five and uh, of course druid has a lot of big spells might be a good fit for that we're going to see another one here as well in this video so uh this card's pretty nuts as far as uh draw impact just getting two great resources out of it it is a little bit of a downturn this is a little bit of a downturn if you were to play these in a row so you might need some mana ramp to really make this feel worth it and you might need some really powerful stabilizers as well off of this to pull things back but you know if you're building a big board of ancients and stuff shortly thereafter you might be able to, to swing just fast enough, particularly with some of Druid's extra lethality and board buff and so on to support it. Now I will say it can be pretty limiting to have only big cards or a lot of big cards, it can get clunky. Sometimes it's much nicer to have a few small cards to navigate a turn because you can do different things and point things in different directions. But if all your cards are big, you kind of sometimes just have like one or two choices. That might be a limiter for this sort of thing where the, the game plan and the path is just too narrow and you don't have a lot of ways to diversify or try something different or 
uh, divert from your typical game plan. So that's nerve wracking, but I do think the power output here looks pretty high and pretty consistent, both of which I like a lot. So uh, this is certainly intriguing. If this is gonna work, it's probably on the back of the Timber Tambourine, just getting you a lot of really efficient stats. And then finally here we have the Drum Circle, a seven mana nature spell for Druid. Choose one, summon five, two, two tree ants, or give your minions a plus two, plus four, and taunt. Now this is a big card that might theoretically support these other uh, big card synergy cards, but I actually don't really like this one too much. I think the two twos at that stage of the game feel like a little too little too late. Uh, they're just not, you know, impactful enough, scary enough, too easily swept up by small boards or really efficient cheap removal you know there's a lot of like three mana spells or something that could easily deal with that board that you spent seven mana to make so the tree ants aren't very exciting to me the buff also just doesn't really feel worth it the taunt aspects kind of a nice upside to give you some defensive utility and and yes i realize like you know the the turn you're dumping the tambor the the tambourine minions you know you could follow that up with the drum circle and give your ancients uh, plus two, plus four, and taunt. There is a natural synergy line there that's possible, but at the same time, you kind of wish you could play the drum circle first to get the extra ancient, but uh, I don't know. I'm still worried about that as a play. Like sometimes I think the tambourine minions themselves are gonna be worth it on their own, and then just maybe do something better with the rest of your big seven mana, right? Some other sort of more efficient kind of play or more lethal sort of play as opposed to this one, which feels defensive. And then the other half of this, perhaps the backup plan aspect with the five two twos, that doesn't feel good to me at all. So I, I do worry about this uh, not really feeling like the right kind of payoff or synergy piece for these other sorts of cards. Kangor Dancing King is a four star card. Anoyo Troop is a four star card. Lead Dancer is a three star card. Jive Insect is a three star card. Heart Throb is a four star card. Idol's Adoration is a three star card. Dreamboat is a four star card. Timber Tambourine is a four star card. Summer Flower Child is a three star card. Drum Circle is a three star card. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for this particular review. Uh, some tough cards to really estimate uh, from a power level standpoint here, because these are all pretty specific packages and hard to predict exactly how all of this is going to shake out a lot of new variables to consider here literally some new keywords to consider so definitely curious to hear everybody's takes on these cards which ones do you think are going to work which ones aren't share all those thoughts and more in the comments below stay tuned for some future reviews thanks for watching and until next time game on